I've been wanting to speak about this for a while and the first thing my girl said to me when I said I wanted to speak about this what was what is the purpose um of my video and what's like what message do I want people to take from this video to be honest my sole purpose of doing this video is simply to be heard um I'm over the notion of doing this video thinking that people will understand me my decisions um my life because no one ever will um I know people are gonna like um scrutinize me on social media and that's fine I've also come to terms with that but at this moment in care I just don't at this moment in time I just don't really care anymore because for like two years is such a long time for a person to be um hidden so at this moment I just feel like I'm gonna burst it's just affected me in so many ways and I just can't hold it in anymore to protect people that probably wouldn't protect me if the was are reversed so when I met D person that you guys know as Bernard it was about two years ago um he had DM'd me and I didn't reply to the DM me it took about a week for me to reply one of my girls actually persuaded me to reply and so I did unwittingly um he was sweet he was funny we exchanged we exchanged numbers and he invited me to his pop-up um shop thing whatever meet and greet thing whatever so I went there not really knowing what to expect um so I went I met him I feel like what he made me feel like when he saw me was just kind of like a love at first sight type thing um instantly he just gravitated towards me he was very sweet um it's like he had known me for years and although I liked that, I was very hesitant because I have kind of vowed to never date anyone in the industry. So I kind of just took it all with a pinch of salt and yeah. So over the next week or two, I started to fall for him as well, simply because for the first time I met someone whose words actually matched their actions. So not only would he tell me like he loved me, and other personal things um he actually showed me this is somebody that always wanted me around this is somebody who i literally i basically moved in um i was staying at his weeks at a time i wasn't going home to my parents um and he just never wanted me to not be there he was always so affectionate so loving so caring always wanted me to be comfortable he wanted me to follow him everywhere. I was with him at all his shows. Just everywhere he went, I was basically just there with him. Um, and I liked that because for the first time, I felt somebody needed me um, for comfort and support. And usually I feel like I'm the dependent one. So to meet a guy that was dependent on me to, to a certain extent and so caring and touchy-feely and just so openly emotional and expressive of his feelings was such a breath of fresh air and I just loved it um started to fall for him like I said he was falling for me from what he was showing me and you know we loved each other whatever things were great um up until November um I think he had to go to Nige because obviously Christmas season is quite quite busy so he had um, a lot of shows to do and stuff so i remember the last night i saw him before he left i was crying he wiped the tears off my face um and he just told me how he loved me and then that he'll be back um so 
I was I was happy with that. I had like a bit of a sweet feeling and my heart sunk because I just kind of knew that from that moment on things wouldn't be the same. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. Um, but I just said, you know what, it's cool, whatever, whatever God wants done, so it will be. So he went back to Naj and I think I just kind of moved back home type thing. Um, but we'd always stay in contact. He'd call me every day. He'd message me every day. Always on FaceTime. It was it was fine. Like he was keeping to his word, which was nice. Um, but randomly, um, I couldn't get in contact with him. Um, I think it got to like mid December or something. I couldn't get in contact with him. I was starting to get worried. Um. Finally, after two weeks, he reached out to me, told me he'd been sick in hospital and he'd been going through some complications and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm in London and there's not much I can do. But I know that I just placed a great strain. He just he used to say to me, I don't know what this is that we got going on, but like, I like it. You're going to be my wife. I'm going to marry you. <laughs> You're going to have twins. You're my sweet salon jalof. <laughs> That's what he used to call me and it just, you know. He made me feel special, so obviously he was just reinforcing all of that. <laughs> but anyway, things from that December on were just a bit weird. Um, obviously, I wanted to come to Nigeria, but um, the people around him know what Ben is like when he's with me. Like he doesn't ever want to do anything. He'd rather just chill with me than literally leave the house to do to do any sort of responsibility regarding music or whatever so they were strongly against me coming to Nigeria anyway which was fine because I had work as well I remember me and him used to go back and forth we were so desperate to see each other and it was just like a really hard time for us um we had a big argument because the thing about me is I'm just like your typical girl I just thought he was making excuses um but I just learned now that he wasn't but yeah, that's fine so anyway we had a big argument and things went the same door a bit shaky and i can't remember correctly but i just feel like we just stopped talking to each other as much um but i just kind of kept faith because i was thinking you know what i'm not even going to stress myself like i know you um i'm gonna see you soon so whatever <laughs> so um i think it was january end of january i go on social media boom I see Burner Boy is in a relationship with so and so, as in, <sighs> I've never cried so hard in my life. Like, it felt like my heart was ripped out my chest. I literally collapsed and I cried for days, probably even weeks. Like, I cried my heart out. Imagine the last time you saw someone, they were going away and they were telling you how much they love you, and you know, they were supposed to come back. You had like an argument or whatever. And then the next thing they're dating so and so. Um, I feel like the thing that hurt me the most about that as well is when I first met him, he always used to emphasise on how much he just loved black women, African women. He makes me feel so good to the point I cut my hair recently. I don't even wear makeup to go see him. He loves my short hair. He's always just telling me how beautiful I am. Um, he just really helped boost my self-confidence in ways I didn't even think were possible. Um... And I just love that about him. He just saw me for me. And he just loved me naturally. And I just have never had that before. So it's just, anyway. So, yeah, I found out he was in a relationship with so-and-so. Crushed me, completely crushed me. So, I mean, I wasn't really going to sit around as well. I flew out. Um, I went to Nigeria in March. Um... Obviously, I think he was back in Nigeria by that time as well. So, obviously, we were still in contact with each other. Like, he'd be messaging me and obviously, I'd be giving attitude and whatever. Um, out of spite, I was just like, yeah, I'm in Nigeria. Nigeria is beautiful. And I was like, well, like, D, I waited for you for two months, two, three months. Like, you come back with a girl. Like, are you taking a piss? Like, he was like to me, um, I heard that you had moved on, hence... I even got in this relationship in the first place. I was thinking, who the hell went and lied to you like that? But you know what? I just thought, like, cool. I just can't be bothered in it. Like, I'm in marriage. Like, you're in marriage. But I ain't even going to try to see you. Like, 
I'm not even trying to fuck with you like that. But just know that you're not the only person that's interested in me. Um, obviously, you was gobsmacked, whatever. Um, I feel like as well, the reason why me and him got along and the reason why he likes me is because at the time, I was quite innocent, quite naive. I, did, I don't really like my personal business being on social media. I was never in his face. I was never acting like a fan. Like, I just treated him like a normal human being. And I feel like he just loved that. I remember he used to say to me, like, why do you love me? Like, why don't you go and be with, like, a lawyer or a doctor? Like, why do you love me? And at the time, I just couldn't explain why I loved him. But, I mean, I know now, like, at the time, I just had a strong feeling and I couldn't explain my love for him type thing. But, you know, I just know it's because he was different. The way it made me feel about myself, how caring he was, how touchy free he was, how sensitive he was behind closed doors. Like, I love that about him. He was just perfect, perfectly imperfect, but perfect for me. <laughs> um, to the point where people around him were very cautious of me, and you know, they were just thinking, like, well, like, where's this girl coming from? Like, how come you guys have gotten so close so quickly? You guys are always together. Like, she's always at your shows. You're going here. She's there with you. Like, what is it about this girl? And we just couldn't explain it. We just used to stare at each other, laugh, and just kind of, like, awkwardly, awkwardly laugh and just kiss or whatever. Like, it was... I can't even explain how magical all that felt. Seriously, guys. Um. Anyway, so Nigeria... I was only in Nigeria for about two weeks, I left Nigeria, came back to London. I literally refused to speak to him, like, since that last conversation we had in Nigeria, I just kind of thought, like, you're lying, I was, I was never in a relationship, I was waiting for you, and you played me, and that's cool. Um, so I think from, like, March or April, we didn't speak till May, when he reached out to me again, just, like, begging me to come and see him, um... And so I went, I went to see him, I knew what was going on, but to be honest at that point, I just thought that this relationship was fake anyway, like I just thought there's no way this boy is going to go and date someone like that, only because of the things that he's told me about, he's like the woman, um, just knowing how he's so in tune with his African heritage and his love for black women, I just thought, you know what, this is a publicity stunt, I don't even care, went to see him, the biggest regret I have is never addressing the issue, I just kind of, um, we both didn't address the issue of this thing that came out in public. We both saw each other and it's like two kids have been separated. We just ran to each other and kind of resumed things as normal, basically. Um, long story short, for the past two years, we've never stopped seeing each other. It's just been like an elephant in the room that we choose not to discuss and we just kind of go about things like it doesn't exist. Um, and I know some people are thinking, how do you even manage to do that? But well, I can't even explain how, but I have. And I just was in love. I've been in love for two years. Like, I've really been in love for two years. And I've been seeing him for two years. And just always around in the background somewhere. And like and people are aware of me but it's just like people could say I'm aware of me but it's just unspoken of like it's like I said an elephant in the room sometimes I lay next to him and I go on UK gossip tv and I just see the charade on social media and I don't even know how that makes me feel it just makes me feel cold um I blocked it out because he would just always tell me how he always come back to me and he loves me and I'm his baby and he's never ever going to leave me. And like I said, me thinking that this relationship is fake just kind of didn't really help the situation because in the past two years, he has never ever mentioned the person I see in public with on social media to my face. That person doesn't even get acknowledged, just like she doesn't even exist in our world. Um... There's so much more I could go into detail about, but <laughs> I can't expose everything because no matter what I say, people are still going to judge. So, I love D. 
and I know this video is probably part D. I'm just tired of protecting you. I've got feelings too, and you can't always have your cake and eat it. Seeing you in secret for so long has literally been so detrimental to my mental state to the point where I've lost friends and I know that I have a part to play and I'm, I see him willingly and it's my choice but you guys will never understand what it feels like to be in my shoes especially when I feel like we just can't stop seeing each other my main purpose for making this video is because over the, the past two years as well I've been able to give anybody a chance I've just been so sucked up in the and seeing D and making sure he's okay that I've kind of just neglected my own relationships and possible possible things that could have blossomed. I've just been so stuck in that secret secrecy that it's just fucked me up <laughs> mentally. And I just want to break that cycle. I don't want to do it no more. I didn't do this video to hurt you. I know it will hurt you because as far as you're concerned, me and you are on good terms but I can't do this anymore I don't want to really address it with you because I feel like it's just such an elephant in the room and two years is such a long time for me to bring up all these feelings of resentment and hurt but although I love you seeing you hurts me even more and it breaks me every time I see you so I'm sorry but it's just how I'm feeling right now. And you guys can judge. You guys can crucify me. You guys can call me a sad chick. But until you're in my position, you'll never know. Trust me. As well, I'm not gonna... I know people are gonna be like, oh, you're doing this for clout and stuff. Like, I feel like I... Not even feel like I have more to lose doing this video than I do if i just kept quiet because this is somebody that's so loving so caring that takes care of me and gives me everything i want just to make sure i'm comfortable but then usually i just think to myself at the expense of what my sanity my sanity <laughs> like so i'm not doing this for clout i've built up my fan base for two years i've been very private for two years i'm not doing this for money because like financially i've been so stable working and just having someone provide for me so i'm simply doing this because i'm about to burst and mentally i just feel like i'm in a bad place i have been um people close to me know this so yeah i don't want any gain from this but i know that the person i'm talking about and the status the status of the person is obviously going to affect all these different um all these different things that i'm saying i'm not doing this video because of so i just don't care i'm never gonna address this again i just wanted to get out there just know that no relationship is perfect nobody's perfect Please don't judge people's lives by what you see in social media because behind closed doors, people are just living double lives, you know? I've been living a double life, he's been living a double life, and <laughs> nobody knew. Two years. Yeah. I just wanted to also add that my girls have literally scrutinised me enough, and as I touched them at the start, they asked again... Um, the purpose of me doing this video and if he wasn't who he is whether I do it or not and my answer to that is I'm constantly reminded every single day every time I go on social media I'm reminded um, so it's just the biggest mindfuck and I just can't continue to see all of that and know my part the part i'm playing and the way it's affecting me so i feel like as well whatever um whatever said about me after this from management or whoever like d we both know what it was or what it is um 
We both know the things we spoke about. We both know the way we made, we made each other feel. We both know how it was when we first met. We both know how it's been these past two years. So regardless of what's said, I know the reality I've lived and I know the way my relationship with you has been. And nobody can take that away from me. No scrutiny, no lie, no statement can ever alter the reality is on what the reality was that we had. So I'm good. <laughs>